Good morning, everybody. Sarasota Tim coming to you from Wawa. Just left 7-Eleven, went to the gym, had a workout, took a shower. I'm back here to do Crushing It for Christ. But let's go get the best cup of coffee in the world uh, before we begin. Let's go inside. Wow, Wawa is getting $3.48 a gallon for gas. That's pretty high. I just paid uh, $3.18 and I got a 10 cent discount over at BJ's Wholesale. So you know I'll be looking for Murphy gas stations where I can also save a dime and I can also uh, find some BJ's on the way too. 348 is pretty high. I know it's a lot higher out in California, but uh, you know, we gotta save wherever we can. Anyway, let's turn the camera around, go inside and see about getting that Cuban roast. They'll probably have the music cranking in here and won't be able to video. He must have been one of the prison, uh, uh, what do you call them, guards. He had his vest on. Let's see. I don't hear anything yet. Too loud. Maybe if I talk over it. But let me get you over here to the... Uh, should I, I'm going to go with the uh, uh, the 20 ounce. I had a 24 already. And we're going to get this... Uh, here it is. The Cuban Roast. Let's uh, get it going. And I'll pause this right now because the music is playing. I'll just talk over it. Hey, yeah, they had some music, so I killed it. But I got the uh, the hottest cup of coffee I ever had in my life, I can tell you that. that is, you got to use these little things on the cup. That's one thing about Wawa, too. You're not going to get a cold cup of coffee, even when you put the cream in it. It's still hot. There's another Tundra working hard. What's this guy going to do? I don't want to get killed. Hang on. Anyway, um, let's get over here to the crusher. This is my last morning at Wawa. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you, I love being out early in the morning. This is, this is gonna be a good cup of coffee. I haven't tried it yet. I got half and half and sugar. You know how they got those open sugar containers about like that size where you just pour it out? That's what I did. I didn't open those little packets. Ain't nobody got time for that. All right, let's put this down right there. Fancy, huh? <laughs> oh, don't look in there. This thing's got to be cleaned up. Now, let's get, uh, get my coffee. Don't spill it, Baker. All right, that's good. Now, um, let me go around the other side and get the Jesus Calling book. I'm excited about it this morning, uh, what it's going to tell us. I know it's got a word for us. Here we go. See, this is not trash. This is a box of my stuff. The trash is this bag here. That's all. Remember that movie uh, with what's your name? Um... Uh, what's her name? <laughs> You're like, yeah, yeah. You gotta give us a little more than that. You know, uh, that girl goes to work for her in New York City, uh, working for Pro something Prada. Lady wears Prada, Prada something. And uh, what's her name to start in it? She's a great actress. She always said, that's all. When you got done with you, that's all. <laughs> I got another saying for you guys too. The guy asked me in Wawa if I was a member of the rewards. I said, can't afford it. That's another great saying. You can borrow it if you want. Can't afford it is for anything. If you're at a restaurant and they ask you if you want more water, can't afford it. If they uh, ask you anything, if you want something or do you want this, can't afford it. And, you know, they're like, what? Can't afford it. It's free. Yeah, it's just a stay in, buddy. So um, you're welcome to use that. Let's get into it. All right. So I see it's the 15th, but you know, before we begin, let's try out this Wawa hot Cuban roast coffee with cream and sugar only. I'm off the sweets, see? I'm off the, uh, the hazelnut. I'm just on pure sugar. Half and half. Now they got the best half and half. 
Oh, yeah. Man. You can't beat Wawa coffee. Really. That's the best cup of coffee I ever drank in my life. Get you one. All right. Let's begin. First, we got to have eyes. Eyes to see. Let's take this bath towel over here. This is my home. Clean up my spectacles. <clears throat> well, I hope you guys have a great day today. It's TGIF uh, for the third time this week for me. It's great. What's great about being retired, forget what day it is. I actually had to turn the camera off and look and ask Siri what the date is because I couldn't tell you. It's the 15th of March. We got that part right. Uh, 15th of March, 2024. And I didn't read it yet, so you have to forgive me for stumbling a little bit. One of them one day... It was hard to read. I, I couldn't see. I, I couldn't understand. I, let's begin. Listen to the love song that I am continually singing to you. I take great delight in you. I rejoice over you with singing. The voices of the world are cockafy, cockafy of chaos, pulling you this way and that. Don't listen to those voices. Challenge them with my word. Learn to take many breaks from the world, finding a place to be still in my presence and listen to my voice. There is eminence, hidden treasure to be found through listening to me. Though I pour out blessings upon you always, some of my richest blessings have to be actively sought. I love to reveal myself to you, and your seeking heart opens you up to receive more of my disclosure. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. Wow, we're, we're, we're going to have a good one this morning. Oh boy, I can't wait to get into that one. The three scriptures uh, from the Jesus Calling devotional that I'm reading from, uh, the three scriptures that are below what I just read that derived to that, uh, written by the author. Uh, the first one is in uh, Zephaniah, an Old Testament book, in chap chapter 3, verse 17. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Then we go all the way to the first book of the Bible in the uh, New Testament, uh, the book in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 17, verse 5. And it reads, while he, was while he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Boy, oh boy. And then another one from the book of Matthew, uh, the first book in the New Testament, uh, in chapter... 7, verse 7. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. One of the most famous verses in the Bible. And yet so many people forget these simple promises of God. Uh, there's a, a YouTube, I think it's in my playlist. You can look for it. Uh, it's a, a YouTube video with readings of the promises of God, of one scripture after the other. I think it repeats itself after an hour. It's like three hours long. And it just keeps repeating these really profound, positive, um, it's called Promises of God. You can search it on YouTube. And it's it's hours long, so you'll know it when you see it. And there's a little background music and an, uh, someone speaking, uh, reading uh, Bible verses. But let's get into what it said today. This is I pray that God will give me the words right now to touch the hearts and minds of those watching this that like this and touch my heart and my mind and that I can learn from it equally because I've already been inspired just from reading it. 
So let's go back over what it said in the beginning. It says that, uh, listen to the love song that I'm continually singing to you. I take great delight in you. I rejoice over you with singing. So God's telling us that he really delights in us. He, he just loves us so much and sings over us. He just, it says the voices of the world are a cockafy. I don't know what that word means, of chaos. Just a noise, I suppose. Uh, C-A-C-O. P-H-O-N-Y. Cacophony. I didn't say it right. Cacophony. Cacophony. Whatever. Look it up. Of chaos. Pulling you this way and that. Don't listen to those voices. Challenge them with my word. So, you know, you can apply this to your own life. I, in my life... I'm a solo guy. I'm around very positive people, and I don't uh, I don't deal much with cockafy, cockaphony, whatever it is. I'm sorry about the interruption, folks, but I did have an alarm go off that I forgot already when I was walking out of Wawa to do these drops. As you can see, I am a pro. I've done them. Every day, all day, for months now. I know exactly what I'm doing. It's in my eye. Don't worry. I don't need to lay back and wall around. Oh, my. That burns a little bit. Anyway, I was saying, I'm not around a bunch of negativity a lot. I I keep my, <clears throat> I keep my uh, nose uh, to the grindstone. And, and I try to stay positive and I try to bring positivity to everyone that I meet. Do I have stumble? Do I stumble? Do I read it in my comments? Do I find it on uh, other things around me? Do I see it in traffic? Of course, of course. Uh, but I just like, you know, what it says right here, those voices of the world are cacophony. I don't know how to say it of chaos. It's chaos. I'll just leave it like that. Pulling you this way and that way. Don't listen to those voices. Challenge them with my word. Speak the word against them in your own mind. I can do all things through Christ. Christ, I surrender this to you. Christ, God, take this away from me. I, I give that to you. You judge them. I don't want to be angry. I, I don't need to have them rob me of my joy. They're not going to steal from me. I'm going to stay positive. Okay? Learn to take many breaks from the world, finding a place to be still in my presence and listen to my voice. Now, we said this the other day. This is a great practice that I do it because I have a lot of alone time. And let me tell you, folks, I've been in some relationships in my life, and I've said this before. I've noticed it. It's a major, major change for me in my life. Every time I've been in a relationship, it has robbed me from the time that I spend reading my Bible, listening to Charles Stanley and others that I esteem on the internet and TV or my phone. It has robbed me from reading a devotional. It has robbed me from a lot of prayer time. Now, you don't have to let that happen, even if you're in a relationship, if you're married. But it has me. It has because... I've been so alone most of my life, so solo, that I don't have these interruptions. I don't have to take many breaks. I get these many breaks, you know, tossed at me all day long. There's so many opportunities for me. And yet I know a lot of people in the world that are working or they got families, they got children, their spouses, uh, they're involved with all kinds of stuff. They're busy, they're business people, and they can get wrapped up. You're the ones that need to take, we all do, but you're the ones especially should adhere to this. You've got to get quiet. You've got to pull away from the world, from your phone, from everything, your kids, your spouses, your friends. Turn that TV off. If you can't watch a good movie like we did last night, The Fastest Indian on Earth or The Fastest Indian in the World with Anthony Hopkins, man, is that... That's a feel-good movie. I had a couple of you already comment saying you want to see that movie. 
and I'm sure a lot of you have. Those are the kinds of films, those are the kinds of things to watch. Grit TV, TV Land, Andy Griffith, I mean, all these good old wholesome shows. You don't need to be watching all that stuff where they go beep, 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 cuss, cuss, cuss. Every day, all those little segments of your life that you give attention to, the TV, the media, those nasty mouth friends of yours, the drugs you might be doing, that bottle of beer, that bottle of liquor, um, you raising your middle finger and acting like you're the boss of the freeway and that nobody else has a right to drive on the road but you, and you're all caught up, and your mind is sitting on your keyboard in your basement making comments to YouTubers about how you can't stand your life, you filthy animal. <laughs> Clean up your act, man. Take a break. Take a breath. Look in the mirror. Before pointing out all these specks of sawdust in somebody else's eye about how they did or did not plan or what they're doing or how they're driving or where they're parked, what they're going to drive, which vehicle they're going to use, which RV can they take, which doctor should they use, Worry about yourself. Get your own life together. It's, you know, it's always the ones that don't have their life together that want to tell other people how to live their life. That's why you should never ask advice from your friends and family, for the most part, especially the so-called friends. Nobody wants you doing any better than them. Everybody's jealous and envious and covets because they've been brought up this way. They've been trained this way from this world we're living in now. It wasn't always that way. It wasn't. There's just more of it today. It's more prevalent. People can't stand if you get something new or go somewhere. They can't be happy for you. It's awful. It's just plaid, plain sad. And yet, there are so many that I read every day in the comments that are happy. Now, I know I went off on a tangent on that, but that's just on my own life. For your life, like I mentioned earlier, you're a business person, you're a spouse, you got all these children, you got this job, you got this drama going there. Come on. You got to get all these orders in. Let's take a break. Let's, uh, let's get quiet with God and let's just let, listen. Listen. Don't, not even pray. Just listen. Hang on. That's the best coffee I ever drank in my life. When I say listen, you say this. You say, all right, God, I'm not going to pray to you. I'm not going to think. I'm not going to petition you for anything. You've already known my, you know my needs. You know what I'm going through. You know why I'm sitting here trying to be quiet and hear you and hear your voice. Please silence my mind. Shut everything off. Let me hear something. Nudge me. You'll hear. Not audibly, but you'll hear. You'll get a nudging in your heart. And if you stay aware all day and not be sidetracked watching all them things that you're doing, watching your phone, doing your, you got to do your job at work. But I mean, when you get all caught up in it and you get your panties in a wad, you're losing focus, folks. You have to stay focused. I don't care what you do. I don't care how busy you are. I don't care if you're still working a prison job. You've got to stay focused on God. If you want a happy life, you got to be focusing on him and asking him to give you this joy. Only he can provide. These goals that you have, maybe he's going to help you achieve them if it's be his will. But look, folks, let's get back to it. It says, it says right there that don't listen to the voices. Challenge them with my word. Learn to take many breaks from the world, finding a place to be still in my presence and listen to my voice. I hope I just explained that, of what that just said, expounded. Now, the second paragraph today uh, says, There is immense hidden treasure to be found through listening to me. So it follows up in the next paragraph. There's an immense hidden. It's hidden. Remember, it's not obvious. It's hidden. you got to find like a treasure hunt. Wouldn't that be fun? There's an immense hidden treasure, too to be found through listening to me. 
All right, so what did he say? Let's break it down. You got an immense treasure by just listening that can be found. It will be found. It can be found. All you got to do is listen. God gave you two ears and one mouth. He wanted you to listen twice as much as you spoke. So quit being short on ears and long on mouth. That's a quote from John Wayne, by the way. <clears throat> Though I pour out blessings upon you always, some of my richest blessings have to be actively sought. You're never going to find them if you don't actively seek them. And that's when he's going to come into that famous verse right now. You have to, how do you seek? You don't go around looking literally. You seek him. You seek him for direction, for blessings, for guidance. How can you be kinder? How can you be more loving? How can you turn your life around? How can you stop being what you're being? How do you think that is doing you any good in your life if you are doing things that you know are sinful and going against God, morality, if you don't believe in God, there's morality. How do you possibly think in your brain that being ugly is anything good? I would really like to know the answer to that one. Or telling somebody what you think because, you know, nobody's as smart as you are. You got to get down off your high horse, folks. You got to humble yourself so that God will exalt you exalt you. So he will provide you these hidden treasures. You know, people go through life, half their life, most of their life, all their life, or just some of their life before they finally open those doors or what it's going to say right here. What it's going to say right here. I love to reveal myself to you and your seeking heart opens you up to reveal, to receive more of my disclosure. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Will be. Do you know in the Bible it says that God can't lie? He's never lied and he can't lie. It goes against him. He's, he's called the, the counselor of truth. He's got many names. And one of them is truth. The Bible's never contradicted itself. The Bible is truth. The Bible was written by people that was inspired by the Spirit of God, not by man. Not one word in the Bible is written by some man, only by his hand with a pen that God directed him to write, every word. So he took some apostles, he took some prophets, he took some people, and uh, they wrote it. Anyway, um, you ask not, you get not. You seek, you don't find. You don't seek, you don't get it. You don't find it. You don't knock and the door's not going to be open to you. All these things that you want, instead of coveting me and other people out there and jealousy and all that, why don't you just seek and knock and ask? Get your own. He's got blessings. What did he say? An immense treasure that hasn't even been revealed to you. Not the obvious ones that you get, but the ones that you can have. And... I don't know how to say this. Since I've been trying to do a better job in my life and uh, quit drinking, which is like a year now, I, I'm going to celebrate the anniversary on the first of the month. One full year, no alcohol, not a sip. I had some non-alcoholic beers. I'm getting tired of them. I don't know why I keep buying them. It's just something to have around there. Uh, while we eating all this good food that Miss Jolene's making. But no alcohol at all. Don't ever want it again in my life. I pray I don't drink it again. There's no good in it. Costs a lot of money, tears your gizzards up. But what was my point? Oh, yeah. Since I've been trying and sharing the word and paying it forward and being kinder and striking up conversations with people and, and doing small things that you can do. It's not a soapbox I'm on here. I'm just telling you to inspire you. If you do some of the things that I've been doing, and you can do a lot more. I, I can do a lot more. I'm going to do a lot more. 
I hope in my travels I can do uh, something good for somebody. I have seen nothing but goodness in my life. I've seen nothing but getting rid of dead weight and places and people that I did not need in my life. When I ignored God, when I told you when I was in relationships in the past, and I, it robbed me from the time that I used to spend when I've been solo most of my life, it took, it took away because I gave my time to them or we just started doing something else earlier than I, and, and just skip over something like this, a devotional, a reading, a praying time, just, just, just busy. Like I was talking about a minute ago, you're a busy business person or businesswoman. And you're all caught up into your, your, your itinerary today, your, your, your schedule, your, your uh, what do they call it? Uh, you're on a time uh, schedule. <clears throat> you got to get it in. Deadline. You got a deadline. Rush, rush, rush. And you forget about the most important stuff. And then when you're laying back on your back horizontal and you can't get out of a bed, you're like, well, I sure wish I would have worked more. I sure wish I would have made more money. I sure wish I would have ignored God more. I sure wish I would have never prayed as much as little as I did. No, you're going to be wishing you had all of that free time, solo time, talking to God, all those blessings you didn't get, all that health you now don't have, all of these things. You, who is this person? He's just walking by. All right. You, uh, let me lock my door. You never know. <laughs> um, you have to and when I was in those relationships, <clears throat> I was missing things. Although I thought I had a good life. You can think you've got a good life. You got money. You're not horizontal in a bed. You're riding down the road in a Porsche. You got your Mercedes. You're like one of these people that want to tell me how I didn't plan. And you are the great planner. You know everything. You're one of those. And you're like, don't listen to him. He lives in a trailer in someone's driveway. You are dead wrong, friend, and you better check yourself because you're going to find yourself when you ignore God and those little blessings that you think of your own power that you're doing are going to run out and then you're going to be wishing. So what I'm trying to say is these kind things, this mature way, this quit drinking, this cleaning up my mouth, these quit watching the media, all of these little things that I've done, taking my weakest link and making it my strongest link, and then making my new weakest link my strongest link, have done, th done nothing but improve my life immensely. I mean, look what I'm about to do. Look what I have. It's not an abundance. I'm not driving a Porsche. I'm not living on the ocean. I don't have a million dollars. But what I have to me is like, this great joy, this attitude, this ability, this, this thing I'm going to start, God willing, today and travel the great, beautiful country called the United States of America with a, a rolling motel on my back in a beautiful truck meeting wonderful people. That, to me, is the blessings he gave me. And your blessings might be different. It won't be mine. You're not going to get a trailer and live in somebody's driveway and then decide to travel the country. That's not going to be what God does for you, possibly. Then again, a lot of you might say, you know, this is a pretty good idea. And a lot of people are doing it. A lot of people are doing it. And for me, it's just, uh, it's just fun. But a lot of things that I had in my life, drinking, some dead-end relationships that I was in, some go-nowhere uh, people that I was hanging around with that weren't healthy for me, weren't good for me, weren't like-minded like me. I've shedded that. And since then, my life has become better, healthier, happier, more free. I'm making my own decisions. I don't have to ask, do, or whatever. Now, if that changes, I'm not saying that's the way I want to be the rest of my life. If that changes and you know, God says, this is who I want you with at this time, maybe next year, maybe five years from now, maybe today. Then I'll listen. I'm always listening. Is this from you, God? Or is this, is this from the devil? So let's continue. You seek, you don't seek, knock, and, and ask, so you don't get it. 
And uh, the first verse says, The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Man, just knowing he's going to be doing that over you, that's great. Then in Matthew it says, While, he's, while he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. This was right before, right after the resurrection, and Jesus appeared to some of the apostles, and he, he showed himself, and he showed the holes in his hands and how it was really him, you know, that resurrected from the dead after he was crucified. And then they heard a voice from the clouds that enveloped him from the Father, saying, listen to him. And so this is how the story and the Proverbs and everything kept on going uh, with how God did reveal himself. He revealed himself through the burning bush to, uh, to Moses. He spoke to Noah. And now we have the Holy Spirit speaking to us through nudging, through umptions, through feelings, through direction, through a feeling we get if we listen quietly. And then if we ask, you know, we, can, we, we get it. And that's the final verse, Matthew 7, 7, the most famous, one of the most famous verses in the Bible for sure. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. So I have a better way of putting it. Seek and you will crush it. Knock and you will crush it. Ask and you will definitely crush it. <laughs>